Yo, 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 what's up? What's good with all my bull lifers out there, man? Hey, yo, so before I get into today's video, as a few of you already know, I just recently started a podcast with my man named Marcus Couch. And with this podcast, man, we're basically just going to be talking about a bunch of bull stuff, not necessarily even just bulls news, but a bunch of different like bulls topics and different scenarios and things such as that. I'm really enjoying it and I'm glad that my man reached out to me to do it. Um, and also, if you just want to stay up to date with the podcast and everything that we have going on with it, go check it out at bullspodcast.com and to subscribe to it, go to bullspodcast.com slash subscribe and you can check us out on all of the social media platforms as well, like Twitter and and Instagram at Bulls Podcast. So, all right, but anyway, without further ado, let's hop into this video. I feel like I haven't spoken to you guys in a while, so I'm gonna hop straight into it. Now, our guy, David Nwaba, finally, it seems like he finally got himself an NBA contract with another team, and that team seems to be the Cleveland Cavaliers. I saw a report today stating that he and the Cavaliers are finalizing a deal. Now, nothing has been set in stone yet, although they said that this deal is going to take place. Like, he's going to be a Cleveland Cavalier, but no numbers have been disclosed or anything like that yet. So, we can't speak about, like, what the contract is necessarily. But David Nwaba is going to be a Cavalier, and I have to say it really, really makes me sad just because I wanted him to come back to Chicago. But, man, it, it really sucks. I really like David Nwaba, but I will say for him, I think it's a really good thing. I think he's going to go to Cleveland and actually get a shot at some playing time, and I really think that he's going to help that team out. So it'll be exciting. But, all right, let's move along. So next, Ryan Archidiakono has been signed to the Chicago Bulls on a partially guaranteed deal. Now, with this signing, I think that the Bulls are more so doing it as insurance. I don't think that uh, Archie is gonna get a whole lot of playing time with obviously Chris Dunn and campaign. You know, I, I don't think that Archie is gonna get a whole lot of time. He's more so the uh, the point guard if someone gets hurt. You know, if Campaign or Chris Dunn gets hurt or something like that, they're gonna have Archie step up. And that's basically the reason the reasoning behind this signing. I believe they signed him to a league minimum deal or something like that. I'm not sure, the numbers aren't disclosed yet with this deal either, so we'll have to see. But Ryan Archie Diacono is officially a Chicago Bull. But all right, let's move on to the next topic. Now, the Bulls preseason schedule has been released. And I think that these are some really nice games to take a look at. Now, the Bulls' first preseason game is going to be September 30th versus the New Orleans Pelicans. Now, this is an important game because, obviously, Bobby Portis and Nico Miritic, they will be matched up against each other, right? And I'm excited to see what unfolds with this whole thing. I'm hoping that Fred Hoiberg will give Bobby Portis some minutes. I'm pretty sure Nico will be getting some minutes. Um, and I, I'm just I'm just excited to see what go what what goes down between the two. But I'm wondering who will win the matchup. So it should be fun. Although this is just a preseason, so I doubt that you know they'll be playing high minutes and everything such as that. I'm pretty sure a lot of the the the, uh, the lower tier players will be playing a lot of minutes just because it's the preseason. But maybe this will be something we can look forward to come the regular season. So it should be a decent game. And next they play uh, on October. October 3rd, they play the Milwaukee Bucks, and that's obviously a pivotal game because Jabari Parker will be going back to Milwaukee playing against Giannis and all of that, so that should be a fun one as well. Uh, on October 8th, they play the Charlotte Hornets, and we see the rookies get to go against each other in Wendell Carter Jr. and Miles Bridges. Then uh, on October 10th, we play the Indiana Pacers. It should be fun seeing the Holiday Brothers go against each other. And lastly, October 12th, the Bulls will play the Denver Nuggets. Now, I, it, it'll, it should be 
fun to see how Michael Porter Jr. is received in Chicago. I really want to see what the reception will be like in Chicago. I believe is uh, a game that will be played at the United Center. So I'm pretty sure a lot of fans are going to be like sad about it and some maybe, you know, not so much. But anyway, all right, let's move on to the next topic. Now, I want to uh, shout out to Bobby Portis. Bobby Portis is my man, and that's the only reason I even care to talk about this topic. It's just because Bobby Portis, he got a lot of swagger, man. I like Bobby Portis' swagger on the court, and he a super cool dude, seemed like it to me at least. And Bobby Portis got some new uh, Crazy Eyes t-shirts. Next stop, sir. They look pretty decent. Um, <laughs> I might grab myself one. I don't know. Maybe if I like go to a Bulls game or something like like that next season, I may just grab one before or something like that. And you know, just just support BP. But like I said, I really like the shirt. So if y'all like them, you know, check them out. Go go help grow out. But all right, last but not least. Now this isn't news, but. I really wanted to get into this just because um, I want to extend this video and give you guys something else to listen to and just to, you know, to think about. Let, let, let's wrap our minds around a little bit more just because we don't have a whole lot of news unfolding right now. So anyway, what I'm talking about is this article that was written by ESPN writer, senior writer, Zach Rowe. the Chicago Bulls core. Now, the first thing that I saw that stood out to me was where, and I'm, I'm gonna paraphrase just because I don't want it to be too long. So I'm gonna paraphrase. You guys can check out the article if you want. But there was one section in an article that spoke about uh, Jabari Parker playing off the ball. Basically, he's saying that he doesn't mind playing off the ball in Chicago. And I think that this is really key because I think he's going to have to. And I think it would bode well for Jabari Parker to play off the ball for the team because we don't need any ball stoppers, right? Like, I, I really want to see the main ball handlers being Chris Dunn and maybe Zach Levine a little bit. But apart from that, I really want to see other players just just getting hockey assists and like being really good team players. I think that it, he would be really, really good on like setting screens for picking pops, maybe doing his thing off the dribble every now and again, but hitting open knockdown jumpers and, and, and you know, setting picks and just rolling to the rim, slashing and things such as that and letting players like Chris Dunn and Zach Levine set him up half the time. Obviously, I think that Jabari Parker is a really good ISO player, but I don't think that Fred Hoiberg is gonna run a system where he wants to play too much ISO ball. So I think that should be a really good thing for this Bulls team if he can't actually play off the ball. Now next, uh, there was one piece in the article where Coach Hoiberg was said to have Okay, now this section of the article just was talking about how um, Lloyd Markin had put up 33 points against the New York Knicks and three days later versus the Detroit Pistons, he missed an open three-pointer that would have gave Chicago the lead, right? But after he missed the three-pointer, uh, the ball ricocheted off of a couple players' hands and it went out of bounds. Now, I'm going to quote the rest of this. It states, as referees review which team should get the ball, Fred Hoiberg, Chicago's coach, drew up a play. He heard marketing apologizing to teammates, quote, I have to make that shot. Hoiberg erased his play and drew up a new one for marketing. Coach, marketing said, I'm going to make it. The two recall, he nailed the game winner, end quote. Now, this just told me that Fred Hoiberg is a true player's coach. I like, I love everything about that piece. Just from him hearing, he already had a play drawn up. After he heard Lloyd Markin and basically going to his guys and apologizing that he did not down that open jumper that would have sealed the game for them, Hoiberg legit heard that, scratched his own play, and drew up another one to give the ball right back to Lloyd Markin and he actually hit the game winner. Now, 
that's super awesome to me because it just instills more belief in the players that they should believe in themselves. And that's all credit to Fred Hoiberg. Fred Hoiberg instills in his players that he believes in him, in them and that they should take that open shot. And mainly Lloyd Marketing, it seems, right? Because he, he's basically the, the focal point of the offense, or at least last year he was. But even players like Chris Dunn with all of the, the game-winning shots that he made last season. So I really think that this will bode well for this young Bulls team come next season because you really, when you have a, a group of young guys, you really want a coach who isn't super hard-nosed in their face and everything like that and just putting them down. You know, it, it, like kind of like what Tom Thibodeau did to Chris Dunn in Minnesota, right? And you see how he turned out once he came to Chicago. He basically did a, a 180. You know what I'm saying? So I really think that Coach Hoiberg is the perfect type of coach for this young Bulls team currently. As it's currently constructed, I think he's the perfect coach. Not saying that he'll be the championship coach or anything like that, but while we have young players, I really like him as our coach. Now, moving on, there was a section in the article where he was basically saying that execs thought that it would have been smarter for the Chicago Bulls to have taken the the Nuggets deal. Take on Kenny Faree's contract, you get their first round pick or signing Jabari Parker. Now, my stance on this is, I think that the Bulls were smart to go with Jabari Parker, just because, now with the Nuggets, they have a lot of promising talent, if you ask me. Nikola Jokic, uh, Jamal Murray, uh, uh, Paul Millsap, you know, they even have a, 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 a few other players as well. The Nuggets are a decent team. I think they won around like 46, 47 games last season. That didn't get them in the playoffs just because they were in the, in the West. But I think that the Nuggets, are actually gonna be a super solid team come next season as well. And I don't think that that first round pick will be that high. I, I, I bet it's gonna probably be somewhere between like 16 to 20. It's gonna be in a 16 to 20 range. I doubt it's gonna be in the first round. So take Jabari, give Jabari Parker the one plus one deal or take on Kenneth Faree's $13 million deal and get the Nuggets first round draft pick, which could be between 16 to 20. Now, usually players in the 16 to 20 range don't turn out to be that great. And not to mention, a lot of the NBA guys are talking about next year's draft class being one of the weakest they've seen in a long time. Now, I can't judge a lot of players just because I haven't seen the college players that's coming up for next season, so I don't know. I'm going off of what I'm reading, but if you ask me, I think Jabari Parker has great upside, and I would have liked to see what, like we're going to do, I would like to see what he can do on this young Bulls team come next season. He's shown that he can be a 20-point-per-game scorer. He can play almost three positions. I think uh, Jabari Parker can play at least a three through a five position, especially against certain centers in the league that are, that are smaller. And... I just think that that hometown effect as well. I think that Jabari Parker will come in and be a lot more passionate than, you know, say some other player that we just pick up. I definitely don't agree with that one. And I'm glad that the Bulls did go with Jabari Parker instead of the Nuggets because they were said to even have been talking about that trade. So it didn't happen, but we shall see what goes on with that one. But all right, let's move on to the next. There was a point in the article where he basically said that come next year, Fred Hoiberg is going to be implementing the San Antonio style. Now, what this is called is the half second rule. What this means is any player that catches the ball, they have a half second before they can either, either pass the ball, dribble the ball to the lane, or take a shot, meaning that the the open man is the one who is going to initiate the offense who's going to take the shot and you know just get everyone else involved no one is going to be a ball stopper 
And I think that that's exactly what the Chicago team needs next season. Like, we don't, I don't think that we have anybody on the team that's a bona fide star just yet. So I don't want anybody on the team feeling like they are. So it should be an everybody eats mentality. We shall see how it unfolds next season. But all right, anyway, man, that's pretty much all the all the news that I have for you guys right now. I hope you guys enjoyed the scenario or or just the rundowns that I just gave you from this article. I thought that it was a pretty decent article. If you guys want to check it out, I'll put the link in the description to it. But all right, man, that's pretty much my time. As I said, yo, if you guys want to uh, stay up to date with the podcast, just go to bullspodcast.com slash subscribe and mess with us on social media as well, man. I'm really enjoying doing this podcast and I'm hoping you guys are enjoying listening to it, but that's pretty much my time, guys. I'm about to sign out of here. Yo, if you are new to this channel, like, subscribe, hit that notification button so you'll know whenever I upload any more videos. It's your man, Wise Black, and I'm gonna get at y'all later, man. Holla.